this season is getting really interesting. Yo, what's good? It's the boy, do the views. And heavy spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 2, you have been warned. We have what appears to be a younger Gato preparing a nice cuppa. Honestly, I thought this was a flashback within a flashback. But no, the episode tricked me. It is pretty much directly after the events of Episode 1. We have what appears to be one of these cursed demon trapping one of the members of Q, a curse user, while Gato is just chilling out and just drinking his tea. That kissy demon cursed thing was unsettling. After this scene we have Fushigoro who is a relative of Megami is chilling in his slippers watching a boat racing game and is it me or do I hear Zeke Yeager behind a man? This entire interaction between the dude in the suit and Fushigoro was a little bit distracting because I couldn't not unhear Zeke Yeager. The dude in the suit mentions that Fushigoro is a sorcerer killer and Fushigoro tells him that his next target is the kid from the Gojo clan. It's a little ironic because Fushigoro who appears to be some sort of relative to Megami is a sorcerer killer yet Megami is a jujutsu sorcerer in the future. This entire scene has a really interesting OST. It's very unlike any OST I've heard throughout the entire Jujutsu Kaisen anime. It feels like something ripped out of Bridget with the orchestral melody playing in the background. It's calming yet unsettling considering how chill this dude is and the fact that he can't even remember Megami even though he's related to him. Does he not care for him or does he not know who Megami is? If this dude is Megami's father, did he go out too long in search for milk and just forgot that he had a son? But the majority of this episode is Gojo and Gato protecting Rika, the bathtub girl from the previous episode and she is the star player Plasma Vessel. As an anime only, I have no idea what any of this means. But from the previous episode, Tengen has to somehow merge with the Plasma Vessel to prevent him from evolving past a human because this dude has some sort of semi-immortality powers. I don't like those words merging with this vessel person who appears to be a 16 year old schoolgirl. Very weird, but also very mysterious. I don't quite understand this. Rika slaps Gojo and is quite spunky. She insults Gato's bangs. Not gonna lie, she's a little bit annoying in this scene, but I'm not gonna lie, she's got really pretty eyes. The way Marpa draws eyes on some of the female characters is really appealing, but despite me not liking Rika at first, the maid that looks after her is a pretty nice lady who has looked after her since she was a kid as something mysterious happened to her parents in an accident. In the episode, something interesting happened between the battle of Gato and this old dude. When the old dude was about to strike Gato down, he flashes back to his dog that died. It got me wondering if this is part of Gato's power. Is this some sort of technique that Gato put onto this old man? Like some sort of hypnotizing spell to distract him so that he can get the upper hand in the battle? Gojo manages to find Rika in one of her classes and all the girls are simping for Gojo. This scene made me laugh a little bit because it felt like it broke the fourth wall a little bit. Nobody seems to have simped over Gojo's eyes before in the anime that I can remember of. Yeah, this is the first time we have actually seen a bunch of people simping for this dude and being in awe at his sparkly blue eyes. It feels like this is how the fans reacted to Gojo when season one first aired. But the funniest moment in the episode was the teacher acting so calm trying to settle the girls down. And then she gives Gojo her phone number. Isn't this lady like 36? And Gojo is like 16. If the genders were reversed, this would not be a good situation at all. But it'd be a good day for the FBI. One thing that is confusing me a little bit of this episode is the members of Q and the Star Religious Group. Are they the same organizations or different organizations? Because the maid sort of questions if they're from this group or the other group. But speaking of the maid, I was not expecting her to go absolutely insane on Bagman. Bagman must be a millennial who watches too much Ed, Ed and Eddie. But it's cool seeing the maid stands her ground and just attack Bagman like the way she did. Although the nut attack was a little unnecessary, that moment really gave me Chainsaw Man vibes. And while the maid girl and Gato are dealing with the other Bagman, Gojo is dealing with a bunch of clones of the Bagman and we get some pretty damn fluid sequences of him. One of my main nitpicks of this episode is that some shots the character designs look really simplified to the point where they look a little cheap to look 
cat. It's a nitpick, but it is what it is. But I guess it did that so that we could have these fluid, smooth like animated sequences. And I'm happy about that. In typical anime form, Gojo over explains his secret technique power to the anime. Gojo's powers sometimes scare me, especially with the fact that this is set in the past when he's a kid. He's part of this Gojo clan mentioned by Fushigoro. What are these people really? Were they just born being badasses? I'm just wondering how strong present day season 2 Gojo is going to be. That is something I do not want to think about, yet I'm also really intrigued. Without any real effort, the dude uses the force, breaks through the building's glass, and is about to destroy Bagman with his reverse curse technique, Red. Without any real effort, with the creepiest smile on his face. Everyone in the Jujutsu Kaisen movie seemed to be really fearful of Gato, but I'm not gonna lie, Gojo was the dude to really look out for. I mean, one bad day and this dude can go absolutely insane. And to be honest with you, we don't quite know too much of Gojo's past. Yes, he's a happy-go-lucky type of dude, but how did he get this power and what is the Gojo clan? Just some of these sequences look insane. The action is unbelievable, dude. And it's only episode two. And the episode ends with Rika showing a text message of her maid friend being kidnapped. Oh boy, what has our boy Gato done now? He was with her. I have a feeling that next episode we're going to start to see why Gato got banished by the Jujutsu Kaisen High School place. These events may be the start of this downfall of Gato. But yeah, overall this episode was good, just like the other one. I think I liked this episode a little bit more. I understood more of what was happening in the episode. And Rika, while I did find her annoying, I'm really interested in who she really is and her powers as well. And why is Fushigoro so determined on kidnapping her? Do they want her power? Who knows, but I'll give this episode a 8 out of 10 and a B plus. What did you think of this episode? Tell me. Like this video, subscribe for more anime reactions, reviews, comparisons, breakdowns, rankings, and more. But thank you for watching, and as always, a boy do the view, signing up.